Hello everybody, this is the Motorcycle Muse and today I'm going to be talking about how a motorcycle engine works. So I have here a 150cc single cylinder four stroke engine and although this is a, a small capacity simple motorcycle engine, if you can understand how this particular motorcycle engine works then you're going to be well on the way to understanding how most other motorcycle engines but in the last 30 or 40 years work as well. I'm going to begin by discussing each of the components on the outside of the engine as I need you to understand what each of those components are and how they basically interact with the engine. You need to know your way around the outside of an engine. Okay. Then I'm going to discuss briefly how a four-stroke engine actually works before we then begin dismantling the engine so that you can see inside each of the components and I'm going to explain in more detail how the four stroke engine works. So we'll start off at the top. Here we have the valve cover which is held on with about three small bolts. Underneath the valve cover we have the cylinder head the cylinder head contains three ports. We have the intake port where the air and fuel mixture from the carburetor feeds into the cylinder to be burned. We also have the exhaust port here. So when the air and fuel mixture is burnt, it will come out through this exhaust port into the actual exhaust itself and to ignite the air fuel mixture we have a little port here where the uh, spark plug screws in so the spark plug has been removed from this particular engine okay so that's the cylinder head underneath the cylinder head we have the main body of the cylinder itself and as you can see, both the cylinder head and the cylinder have little fins and the point of the little fins is to help cool the engine. So in this body here of the actual engine in the cylinder head and the cylinder is where the burning takes place. And as a result for all the heat is created and we need needs to be cooled down. So that's the whole point of the fins. They increase the surface area of the engine. Uh, so more air is hitting the metal surface and it cools it down quicker. So this is an air cooled engine. Um, below that we have on the uh, right hand side of the engine we have the clutch case cover. So this clutch cover is just this one large aluminium cover, which is held on with a number of bolts around the edge. On the clutch case cover, we have the actuator arm. And this actuator arm uh, acts on the clutch through the clutch cable, which would usually be connected in here. So when you pull the clutch with your left hand on the motorcycle, it actually pulls this actuating arm which disengages the clutch. When we take this off, we will find the clutch underneath this clutch cover, and it will be the clutch itself will be attached to the crankshaft. Here we can see the sight glass for checking the oil level. So when it's on a level surface, you should see the oil. There's a little bit of oil in this particular engine, which I'll have to drain out later before I start the, um, disassembling the engine itself. We also have a little dipstick here, which can be screwed out. You won't have a dipstick in all engines, but on this particular engine we do, uh, which can be used to accurately check the oil level. And it can also be used to um, put pour oil into the engine if we've drained the oil or if it's running low on oil. So that's the clutch cover. Coming around to the rear of the motorcycle engine, 
here we have the starter motor. So the starter motor is what cranks the engine over when you hit the start starter button uh, up at the right hand of your motorcycle. It will be connected to the starter motor, which is this wire. This connects it to the battery uh, or power, electrical power, which it then uses to crank the engine over. And it, it acts on the um, the engine through some reduction gears to get the engine started. So on the left hand side of the motorcycle engine we have the stator cover. So again this is one large aluminium cover which is held on with a number of bolts. Uh, inside here we have the actual stator which Actually comes out of the engine through this lead and leads into the regulator rectifier and this is responsible for charging or recharging the battery okay and uh, this is uh, connected to the, um, the crankshaft as well so on this we have we can undo these four bolts and we have a little take it off this little cover and we can see in to the actual engine. We can see the bolt, uh, one large bolt at the end of the crankshaft, which we can use to turn over the actual or crank the engine manually. So the main point of this engine or of any engine is to make the motorcycle move. So this engine does it through a little front sprocket. So this is the, probably the main output from the engine. It's this little sprocket. So this is connected to the gearbox. And uh, this, through the turning motion, will act, will have a chain on it, which will be connected to the rear sprocket on the rear wheel. And that's what drives your motorcycle. So here we have the, um, the connecting rod which we the the lever has been removed from this the foot lever but the left foot lever for putting it into gear and moving it up from first to second to third to fourth to fifth or sixth gear if you have it on your motorcycle it the gears are changed through this unit here okay so we also on most motorcycles engines they will have uh, an oil filter possibly uh, fitting in here this particular engine does not have an oil filter instead what it has is this little plastic bolt here which cover bolt which when we remove this little cover there is a little oil strainer in underneath which is on a spring so that's how the oil is cleaned if there's any large chunks of metal in your oil they're going to damage your engine and you want to get them caught in that oil strainer and then if we want to drain the engine oil we have the engine uh, drain plug here so we turn that anti-clockwise and the oil will drain out of the uh, bottom of the engine that is should have a little uh, copper washer or a crush washer and the whole point of that is to make sure that no oil drains out through that plug <clears throat> so then looking at the rear of the, mo the motorcycle engine again we can see that between the clutch cover between the clutch cover and the alternator or stator cover we have the actual crankcase. So this is the middle part of the engine down at the bottom. So the crankcase contains a number of components such as the gearbox, it will, it will contain the crankshaft which will run through the motorcycle right through the middle there um, and it will also contain things like the oil pump uh, and we'll take a look at that when we open the engine up. And then lastly, to 
mount the engine to the frame of the motorcycle we have some uh, uh, engine mounting points so we have one two three at the rear and then we have one two at the front of the motorcycle so there will be engine mounting bolts will go through these points engine mounting bolt will go through these points and uh, allow the engine to be mounted securely also at the rear of the engine coming out the top of the crankcase we have this little tube which is just the crankcase breather tube uh, and that is just to allow um, some of the uh, gases to escape from the top or the bottom of the crankcase So to explain how a four-stroke engine works, I'm going to remove the cylinder head here from the cylinder so that you can see the piston. I have already removed here the valve cover. I have removed the rocker arms so that you can just see the valves. Okay. So this is on the right hand side is our air and fuel mixture intake valve and this is the exhaust valve for burnt fuel okay and when I pull off this cylinder head and look on the other side I can see the valve sitting snugly in their seats so we have here again the intake valve for where the air and fuel mixture comes in and when that that only comes in when this port is open comes in through here comes in through here and when this exhaust valve is open the exhaust fumes go out through here on the cylinder head and out to the exhaust so I'm just going to leave that here so you can hopefully visualize it a little bit better so here we have the cylinder itself and we have sitting in the middle of it the piston so I'm going to crank it over to demonstrate how a four stroke works so the first stroke our input valve is going to be open okay so the input valve is open and as our piston moves down it creates a vacuum right so that downward motion it has created a void which means that something has to move into it due to the vacuum and because the intake port is open the air fuel mixture gets pulled in through that intake port into the cylinder okay so the air intake <clears throat> or the air fuel mixer is pulled in by the piston moving downwards the intake port will then close and the exhaust port will also be closed and the piston moves back up okay so it moves back up through momentum and it compresses the air fuel mixture in this in the cylinder so the air fuel mixture that filled up the entirety of that cylinder void is now compressed into this tiny space here okay and it's approximately at this point that the spark plug which will be installed in the cylinder head will be pointing into the cylinder here it will ignite so it ignites just before the piston reaches top dead center or the maximum or height that it reaches in the cylinder so that causes that spark from the spark plug causes 
the air fuel mixture to ignite or burn it should not be an explosion it should be a burn and that burn results in the air fuel mixture heating up very rapidly and as the air fuel mixture heats up rapidly it causes the air fuel mixture to expand and that expansion causes forces the piston back down so the pressure from that air fuel expansion as it burns and heats up causes the piston to move back down until it reaches the bottom of the cylinder and at this point the air fuel mixture should essentially be nearly all burnt and the momentum again on the crankshaft and the piston itself cause it to come back up and again during this stroke the exhaust valve here the exhaust valve on the head of the cylinder will be open and that upward motion will cause the burnt air fuel mixture to exit through the exhaust valve and out to the exhaust itself and that is essentially why it's called a four stroke engine so again we have the downward motion which pulls in the air fuel mixture through the import port momentum causes the piston to come back up compress the air fuel mixture and before it reaches top dead center the spark plug ignites the mixture which causes the air fuel mixture to heat up and expand rapidly and which forces the piston back down very quickly and again momentum causes the piston to come back up and expel the air the burnt air fuel mixture or the exhaust gases out through the exhaust port and that is a four stroke engine